Now, the number of births in China dropped by 10% in the last year to its lowest level on record. And this is despite government efforts to support parents. And there are fears that the country could become demographically imbalanced. Now, for more on this, let's speak to our CGTN correspondent in Beijing, Zheng Xunying. Zheng, thank you so much for joining us this morning. What is the latest data showing regarding the birth rate in China? Oh, thank you. Uh, honestly speaking, the official data has not been released yet uh, from the government. But what we do know that over the past few years, we've witnessed continuous decline of uh, China's fertility rate uh, and making it, in fact, one of the lowest in the world. Uh, and when it comes to the main reasons for the decline, um, I think, first of all, uh, there are fewer women, first of all, uh, fewer women of childbearing age, uh, because we know that there used to be a strong preference for a son during the one-child policy, and that has caused a very unbalanced gender ratio. Uh, and secondly, financial pressure is another reason. Uh, is another reason. Uh, including the relatively high property costs, um, the high childbearing or raising costs. Uh, you know, according to an official Chinese survey uh, carried out a few years ago, parents spend an average of 8,000 yuan every year on one child up to age five in rural areas, where disposal income per capita was only 11,000 yuan. Um, so we know that to raise a child in China cost the majority of a family's income, and not to mention uh, the weak children's care services. So given all these pressures, it is no surprise that Chinese families prefer to have fewer children now. No, it's completely understandable, especially also in South Africa with our high cost of living. But what is your government doing to support families who want children or who already have a child to, to help them with, like, like you mentioned, those challenges that they are? Yes, um, as I said, the government has uh, already uh, been aware of those challenges and now is planning to ease the burden on families. Uh, for example, it's... 14th five-year plan has proposed uh, some improvements in the country's social support system, especially when it comes to the infant and child care services. And some regions like Shenzhen uh, have st already started offering incentives such as uh, cash allowances, affordable housing, and more friendly work environments, uh, as well as some support for the huge numbers of migrant workers and those born after the 1960s. But, but according to some of the experts that I've spoken to, uh, they argue that support and incentives Incentives should cover not just the young or the elderly, but also all family members. Um, we also need more measures to manage salaries and even reduce taxes, um, which could hopefully help young couples find the balance between developing their careers and raising children, uh, and which could turn finally help solve the problem. Jane, just the last one. What, what could be the risks if, if, if this birth rate is not, um, I wouldn't want to say improved on, but um, um, a bit better in the sense that is it, is it um, you know, minimizing the, the, the employable um, population in China? What risks are there? Uh, I think it's a very complicated question, but mm. according to some of the experts that I've spoken to, um, they believe that the fertility rate, some believe that the fertility rate could possibly lead to um, like low labor force, a weak labor force, um, and uh, mm. Mm, that lack of domestic demand, stuff like that. But um, there are also experts who believe that the fertility, the low fertility rate won't um, cause too much problem um, because we are also at the same time we're witnessing uh, a great deal of improvement when it comes to the um, education and we are having more high quality labor mm. um, so yeah so we, we have to see uh, more results from mm. the research thank you so much for your time this morning that was our CGTN correspondent in Beijing Zheng Xunying